Resuscitation is at its most beautiful when clinicians can see beyond the basic guidelines and solve complex problems in real time. In this video, I describe an amazing case when a baby's life was saved by a pediatrician and no one else in the resus team knew what to do. I also share some thoughts on how you can carve your own training path to gain next level clinical knowledge and skills. Now, when you're on a journey, you've got to choose your destination. Where are you going? Are you going to be an anaesthetist, an emergency physician, an intensivist, a critical care nurse, a paramedic? Those are all great goals. But once you get there, you're then assigned a label and you work out of a box. What you're expected to know and what you're allowed to do is defined by other people's expectations. That emergency physician will lack the diagnostic subtlety of the internist when diagnosing the febrile traveler. That Adult intensivist is not going to be much help with this pediatric epiglottitis case, is he? And we don't want that anesthesiologist stopping to help out at a car crash. She won't be a useful pair of hands. <laughs> now, those statements could, with some individuals, be true, but we can all think of many examples, many individuals that prove those statements to be absolute bollocks. So when choosing your career path, don't necessarily be defined by the expectations of other people or the limitations of the regulations of a single college. Have some twists and turns as you, as you define your journey through many specialties, even other professions. That will give you two things. First, it will give you the knowledge and skills and attitudes associated with training in that specialty. But the other thing is it will give you an appreciation of what those other specialists can offer to a resuscitation. A friend of mine was in a resuscitation team dealing with a four-day-old infant, a newborn who'd come in with respiratory distress and then became apneic in the emergency department. They instituted bag mask ventilation, but the saturations dropped to the 80s and the stomach was distending. So they inserted a nasogastric tube to eight centimeters at the nares and continually aspirated air. But the saturations dropped to the 60s. The baby became bradycardic. The baby was expertly intubated and it was confirmed with capnography. But the baby was mottled and became more bradycardic. Then the pediatrician arrived, noted the history, looked at the insertion depth of the gastric tube, grabbed an intravenous cannula, stuck it through the abdominal wall and aspirated air immediately from the stomach. The saturations came up into the high 80s the heart rate normalized into the 140s, and that patient went to the operating room for ligation of a tracheoesophageal fistula. So what went on there? There was an abnormal communication between the trachea and the digestive tract. So gas going in through the tracheal tube went into the stomach. That stomach distended, impaired ventilation, and impaired venous return, just like a tension pneumothorax would. That tension had to be relieved. The management of that patient did not fit into any particular resuscitation algorithm. And even though there were expert resuscitationists providing excellent resuscitation, it did not fit into any pattern that they'd previously seen. But the pediatrician came along, recognized the shallow insertion depth, realized the esophageal anatomy was probably abnormal, put two and two together, saved the baby's life. So the presence of another specialist at that resuscitation added value and added a certain amount of beauty to that resuscitation. So by learning from other specialists, we can gain new skills and we understand what they can bring to the resuscitation, but we can only do that if we leave our egos at the resuscitation room door. And I'll confess that's something I probably struggled with, certainly as a registrar in critical care and emergency, where I thought I was a real gift to resuscitation. And I was reminded about that one day by one of the ED residents when she warned me. She said, you know, Cliff, you know, if your ego gets any bigger, you will be in danger of coning 